One of the new products for 2010 is AutoCAD Inventor Tooling Suite, which is a great product for mold designers to quickly and easily design their tools. But if you're designing plastic parts and you're an AutoCAD Inventor professional user, you can also download this for free and you get some great mold flow functionality to help validate your part designs for manufacturability. So the example we have here is of the printer assembly and there's obviously a lot of plastic parts in here but the one I want to use for this example is this little foot on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up separately and if I rotate this model around you can see I've added a lot of different plastic features in here. So we have a pattern of ribs, we've got a couple different bosses with ribs as well as this rest back here. And now that we've done all the design work we want to make sure that this part's manufacturable. And we can do that using inventor tooling by creating a new mold design assembly and then importing in our plastic part. So now I've imported the plastic foot. The first step in the analysis to check for manufacturability is we need to select a material. And I'm going to go ahead and use this ABS material that I've used for past analyses. And then I'm going to go into my corn cavity function and now there's showing four different analyses we can run. There's a gate location analysis, a process settings analysis, a filling analysis, and a shrinkage analysis. And to check the manufacturability, what we want to do is run this filling analysis. But there's a couple steps we need to do first. And the first thing we need to do is select a gate location. And there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can either set it manually, if we know where we want to place it, or we can run a quick gate location analysis, and it will suggest the optimum placement for that gate. So for this case, again, I, I know where I want to place it midway down this back edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and type in my dimensions for that gate pop it in there and now the next thing I need to do is input the process settings and again you can set these manually or you can run a quick process settings analysis and it will suggest the optimum condition for this particular part but for this example I'm going to go ahead and type in a few process settings here and then once we've set our gate location and our process settings we can go ahead and run our filling analysis So now I cheated and skipped ahead a little bit, but you can see the analysis time runs pretty quick, about two minutes to run this analysis. And the summary is telling us that we can fill the part easily, but the quality may be unacceptable. So we've got six results that we can use to try and diagnose what the problem with this part is going to be. And the first one I want to show is this confidence of fill plot. And here we're seeing the part is all green, which is actually a good sign. If there were any yellow or red regions on this part, then we know that we were going to have trouble just filling the mold and we weren't going to get a complete part out of the mold. But in this case, we're all good and we can move on to our quality prediction plot. And here we're actually seeing some yellow regions in the part. And if we flip this model over, we can see that everywhere there's a rib, we're getting this yellow indication that there's some kind of quality problem. And we can use our examine result tool to pinpoint what the cause of these problems are. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on one of these yellow regions and it's telling me that the cooling time is too high. And the reason for this is that our ribs are a little bit too thick and they're shrinking more than the rest of the part is. And what this is going to do to the final part is leave a sink mark on the surface which is a visual defect, obviously with something we can't have on this type of product. So we know we've got that one issue we need to correct, we need to reduce the thickness in our ribs. We've identified that. Everything else in the part looks pretty good, so we'll move on to the air traps result. And this identifies anywhere there's going to be entrapped air caused by the flow of the plastic through the mold. And the biggest problem with air traps is they can leave some kind of visual defect on the part, which again, unacceptable for this type of a product. And we see we have a couple in here, and the way we identify the reason for these occurring is through the fill time plot, which will actually show how the plastic flows through the mold. So we can animate this result. And I'll step forward through the filling process and we can actually see these air traps forming. We get a little hesitation in the rest and we see race tracking through these ribs causing an air trap to form in here. So we see this one created right here and if we step forward a little bit further we see another one created over in this region. So that's one more problem that we need to solve. And if I back this up a little bit we can play the animation and you can see the plastic filling through the rest of the part. Now we can close that out. Now go ahead and uncheck this plot here and now that we know we've got these two problems we have the air traps and the rest and we have our ribs are too thick we can go back into our part file and make a few quick and easy design changes so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this rest and to remove that hesitation I'm actually going to increase the thickness to about 0.1 inches 
And the second thing I need to do is thin these ribs up a little bit. So I'll go into that and I'll drop these down to 0 0.08 inches and I'll decrease the taper by a degree. So now I just made those two quick changes. I'm going to save my part model, go back into my mold design, and we'll update the part. And then all we need to do is rerun this filling analysis to see what the effect of, that, of our changes are going to be. So now I've skipped ahead again, and we have our summary of results, and this time we're getting better news. Our part can be easily filled, and the quality is acceptable for the current injection locations. And we can go back through and look at our results again to make sure that those two problems have been solved. And the quality prediction plot, everything's looking green, so we're good to go. And if we look at the air traps plot, we zero in on those two locations where those air traps were occurring and the rest before. We see we've made those disappear. And we'll run the fill time plot one more time, animate those results. Step forward just a couple, and we can see how the plastic flows evenly through that rest now, getting rid of all the air traps that we had. And again, I'll show the rest of the part filling up with plastic. So these are just a couple defects that you can find using the mold flow features embedded into Inventor Tooling. And if you're a part designer using Inventor Professional, I encourage you to go out there and download Inventor Tooling from the website at www.autodesk.com/AIT.